day meeting for December 1st. Commissioner Chair Janet Long is not feeling well, so I'll be taking care of the chairman today. Welcome, and first of all, to get started, we need a motion to let Jamie Robinson attend the meeting we're, via Zoom. I, I'm sorry, we'll have to wait till uh, Gina, Gina shows, shows up. up. Okay. Yeah. We don't have a quorum yet for any voting. We can't do it. Yeah. But we do see you, Jamie. You, could, you could start the info items. No offense. <laughs> I should have just gone over to Ron's office and sat with him. <laughs> You can call for public comment, though, just so we have it on record. Okay, let's start with that. Is there any public comment? No. There are no public comments. <laughs> there are no public comments. All right, then we're going to wait for Gina. Okay. Maybe, but, but while we wait for Gina, maybe we can do the informational item, the uh, yeah. state legislative update. Sure. Oh, and there, there she is. Comes. There she is. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Did you have that traffic? Oh it's my gosh. It's always so ironic that I get stuck in traffic on the way to a PSTA meeting. I know, that's why I always say like. <laughs> All right, welcome, Gina. To bus. We'll let you give you a minute to get set up. How's that? I'm good, thank you. Okay, then we're going to continue with item number one on the agenda. We're going to make a motion for Jamie Robinson to attend the meeting via Zoom. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Welcome, Jamie. How are you doing today? Well, thank you. All right. Let's move on to, uh, there's no public comment, item two. Let's move on to item three. Approve the minutes from the October 8th, 2021. Do I, I need a motion? Move approval. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. We're going to move on to item four, informational items. We have Ron Pierce here to give us an update on our state legislative updates. Ron, welcome. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members. Um, I'll be pretty quick. We're in Tallahassee for committee week number six, which as you all know, is our final committee week before the 2022 session starts on January the 11th. Let me just give you a quick, a quick um, couple of updates on issues we're working on on your behalf on your legislative agenda. Number one is the restoration of the, um, the transportation disadvantage innovative, innovative um, funds. As you all know, um, those funds were removed last year when the corridors bill was repealed. Um, yeah. We continue to hear, I know that when we had um, Brad and others in Tallahassee a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, we keep hearing that those funds are going to be restored. Um, we've heard that from the governor's office, the speaker's office, and the Senate president's office. And so initial budgets will come out sometime in mid-January. And so I think I feel very confident. Um, Dan and Jamie were part of those conversations. I think we feel really good about, um, you know, those dollars being restored. So um, we're in good shape there. I know we've got Senator Hooper um, prepared if they're not for some reason. He's the vice chair of the Transportation Economic Development Appropriations Committee in the Florida Senate. So it's a key position for us for those funds. Number two is Rule 1490 as it relates to um, spending transit dollars, working with transit agencies and TNCs. My update there for you is, uh, we've been in contact with the department, um, with DOT. That process is still ongoing. There's still no language at this point. Even once there's language, it still has to go through the rulemaking process. So what we've begun to do is kind of run a parallel track of do the rulemaking process, but also maybe come up with what could be a legislative fix. We actually had a joint call with Uber two weeks ago, and um, which Brad was a part of. Um, we've got some language um, you know, from PSTA's attorney and so we're in the process of kind of vetting that language with Uber and others. Um, and um, Brad, one update I have for you there is we're going to probably end up meeting with Senator Hooper um, next week just to kind of share the language and possibly have him engage DOT about the language. And so okay. those things are starting to, to move forward. Um, the VW settlement funds, we continue to have conversations with the governor's office um, and DEP to ensure that those funds are not just spent on school buses, but also have the ability to have some of the electric buses spent on um, transit um, buses as well. And let's see, um, the last two issues, um, Medicaid, um, we had a good meeting with, um, with ACA um, a couple of weeks ago. We've, um, since then, we've had a couple additional conversations, sent ACA some follow-up information that they requested. And I think that's gonna lead to a follow-up meeting with them in early January. And then the last one is relating to um, state transportation funding flexibility. 
There is a bill that Senator Hooper's filed that does get some additional flexibility. It's actually up in Senate Transportation this morning. We're obviously closely following that. That would give some additional flexibility for transit dollars as it relates to CIS. And then we continue to work with DOT on some of the other um, flexibility that's coming more directly from them. Um, we're waiting for DOT to respond. We asked DOT about the pre-award authority for DOT grants, kind of what the federal government does. Um, we're seeing if that's something they can do or do they want statutory statutory authority to do that. Um, I'm trying to get clarification on that between now and January. The good news is Senator Hooper has a bill that's moving that this would be germane to. And so if we needed to, we could add that language um, in the process um, of, of the committee process later on. So um, Mr. Chairman, I'll stop there. Um, again, this is committee week number six, the final committee week. Um, yesterday and today is pretty busy up here. Tomorrow um, is not quite as busy. And then um, we expect some, um, you know, probably tail off a little bit between now and Christmas. Then things will, you know, will ramp right back up because session starts again on January the 11th. So I'll stop there to see if anybody has any questions, comments, or if I can help further. Thank you, Ron. Are there any questions? Brad, go ahead. Hey, Ron, thank you very much. That was a good update. Um, on the last thing you talked about, the funding flexibility stuff, I think you said that um, there's something coming up with Senator Hooper, uh, uh, like I think next week, or is that just the DOT proposals for funding flexibility? DOT flexibility, there, there's a bill that's up that actually specifically speaks to some of the flexibility and some of the flexibility things that DOT has been talking about. I'll send you the staff analysis after the call. Okay. Okay. Not, not some new, not some new thing. It's not new, no, sir. It's things we've already been talking about. Yep. Okay. Excellent. All right. Any other questions? All right. Let's move on to item 4B. We're going to get a federal legislative update from Harry and Steve. Welcome, guys. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's good to be with you. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Um, we, we want to give you a quick update on what's going on in Washington. I've got a couple items here. We want to talk about the current um, funding appropriations cycle. The annual budget process is stalled out, and um, th there's a deadline on Friday to, to avoid a shutdown of the federal government. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the, I think since we've last met, the president has signed into law the bipartisan infrastructure bill. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And, and we'll also talk about the status of the other infrastructure bill that's um, that's uh, the House has passed and is sitting in the Senate right now for further action. So I'll start off with the, the appropriations update. That's the big item for this week in Congress. Uh, Congress, the fiscal year, federal fiscal year began on October 1st. Uh, as has become routine, Congress has not gotten its appropriations work done, annual appropriations work done this year. And so they passed a continuing resolution to keep the government open and running through Friday, which is December 3rd. The House and Senate are working towards an agreement now to extend that continuing funding resolution until sometime late January. I think, Steve, the last date I saw was January 28th. There's some effort to push it into early February. We'll see what happens there. I think they're going to get that done either today or, or tomorrow to avoid a government shutdown. Uh, the biggest problem, I think, for for PSTA in that is twofold. One is uh, Congress won't resolve its, its, its the amount of funding available for some of the programs that are most important to you, like the next raise grant application round, the low no bus grants, the uh, bus and bus facilities grants, some of the things that you traditionally apply for. That The later the Congress goes in getting these bills done, the later the request for proposals comes out next year for, for the next funding round. So that, that is a problem. It also creates a problem, and Steve can probably talk to this better than me, it, it creates a problem with the implementation of the bipartisan infrastructure bill, because it, what one of the things that bill did is supercharge some of the annually funded pots of money that are available for transit agencies like PSTA. And we're not exactly sure what the Appropriations Committee is going to do since some of these pots were expanded by two and three fold, whether they're going to reduce some of that funding in the annual cycle or not, and, and again, delaying the the annual appropriations process will likely delay some of the implementation of the new programs and existing programs that were created in the infrastructure bill. So that said, it just slows down the process for you being able to access some of those funds. So, um, so there's that. Um, I, and then I will, I'll pass to Steve. Maybe Steve can comment about the Build Back Better program, and then I'll take it back at the end and talk about a conversation Brad and I had yesterday about raise grants. So Steve, you want to add your comments? 
Sure, thank you, Harry. Uh, Chairman and members of the subcommittee, uh, thanks for the opportunity to join you today. Um, in terms of the, build, uh, the Infrastructure uh, Investment and Jobs Act, which Harry mentioned was signed into law, we all know that. Uh, two interesting things that happened at the same time that we wanted to make sure you're aware of. One of them is they created a task force. The president created a task force that's led by, um, well, first of all, there's a White House infrastructure coordinator, uh, former mayor of uh, New Orleans, Mitch Landrieu, is going to be the uh, task force chairman. He will be there to guide the impl implementation of the new bill, um, making sure that, that they advance the administration's priorities in giving away this money. So that it's really, as, we, as I've said for many, to you all many times, it's not just what the most important project the PSTA has, it's the most important project the PSTA has that meets the administra Biden administration's priorities. And one of those priorities, just to highlight for you is, again, is the Justice 40 initiative, uh, which calls for at least 40% of federal investments to go to, quote, disadvantaged communities. So there's more, more that they have to define of what they intend to do in terms of uh, uh, fl ensuring those funds flow to disadvantaged communities. But as PSTA looks to uh, apply for these uh, competitive grants, that's a, an important priority to keep in mind uh, because they will be focusing, trying to uh, steer the money to those communities to make sure they get the benefit of all of this infrastructure money. I started to say there is an infrastructure task force uh, that's going to be working out of the White House, headed by White House staff, but it really has uh, about seven or eight different cabinet secretaries, including uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, but it includes Interior, Energy, Commerce, EPA, Ag, Labor, and OPM. So there are going to be, uh, there's a significant layer of White House involvement in this infrastructure bill that will affect how this money goes out. So it's not just as simple as going to DOT and, and ensuring or FTA and ensuring that you've got the best uh, grant for FTA. It's really going to be uh, in working to make sure that the, these oversight entities are involved as well. Now, moving over to the Build Back Better Act, uh, which is the infrastructure bill aimed at people, health care, child care, climate and tax initiatives. It did pass the House by a party line vote. One, one Democrat vote opposed it. So it was 220 to 213. Um, there are several transportation provisions, including a $10 billion one year grant program for uh, to ensure transit, transit has access, provides access to affordable housing. So it is, uh, if enacted as the way it passed the House, it's an, it would be just short of $10 billion, all to be given out in FY 2022, which is this current fiscal year. And it would be money that uh, then transit agencies would have 10 years to apply for. Now that's a huge amount of money. And so it is something that we wanna work with PSDA to make sure that you're in line competing for. So with that, um, there's a whole lot more going on, but I'll turn it back to Harry and let him kind of wrap things up before questions. Yeah, thanks, Steve. So the other thing, Mr. Chairman, I would say is it kind of wraps into what Steve was talking about. You know. One of the disappointments, I think, in November was the raise grant uh, awards were made and the Clearwater Transit project was not uh, selected to be funded. There were 90 projects funded. Congress had provided about a billion dollars for that program. Um, uh, PSTA's project was not funded. Uh, Brad and I and, and staff had a good call yesterday to kind of go through some of the projects that were selected, look at some of the things, kind of what Steve was talking about. This is really the first major competition where we got to see the Biden administration making awards based on their priorities and, and, and looking at some of the projects. There were several transit centers that were funded along the lines of what you're trying to do with the Clearwater Transit Center. And, and you know, Brad, we talked yesterday about what, what were other transit center projects doing? And they were, I mean, they were looking at getting people to jobs. That's a priority of this administration. How do you move people from one place to another so they could have benefit of of good job selection, safety was a big issue. Access, climate was a big issue. What what initiatives were included in these projects that uh, helped reduce um, sea level rise, uh, global warming, all those types of things? Some of those things were in there. There even one of the projects even emphasized its its um, ability to keep uh, transit passengers cool from the temperature increases. So it, it kind of it's instructive to look at those ninety winners and see what was what what they were focused on uh, and, and that gives you a guide i think for what the administration is going to be looking for in some of these programs that will be funded in the bipartisan infrastructure bill uh brad and i talked yesterday we're going to make sure that early in the new year we get a psta a debrief from usdot on the rate on your application for the Clearwater transit center 
so you can make any adjustments to it to get ready for the next cycle. Steve and I will be watching very closely here, Otis, the funding opportunities for these programs. Some are existing programs and some are new programs as they're created. What those criteria are to make sure you are aware of that. So as you're applying for those funds, you have the best information available. The other thing we talked about, Brad, yesterday, and maybe, I don't know if you want to talk about it, is trying to get, I think, we're not exactly sure when the agencies are going to reopen in Washington. This question always comes up is, When's the right time to come to Washington? We, we see congressional offices are starting to open up and take meetings. It's kind of office by office. Some are still preferring virtual. Some are preferring in-person meetings. The agencies, for the most part, I, maybe Steve can comment about DOT, but are still doing meetings virtually. Um, but maybe in the new year, if, if things um, settle down a little bit, the agencies will think about reopening again. Brad and I talked yesterday about trying to get a delegation from PST and the community up early in the new year to talk about the transit center project. Uh, I presume you're going to reapply for that and, and other projects you're looking to apply for. Um, just by way of an example of the bipartisan infrastructure bill, it provides an additional one and a half billion dollars per year for five years for uh, raise grants. That's compared to one billion dollars this year. And that could, as I mentioned earlier, the regular appropriations bills providing a billion dollars for the program. So we don't know whether there's going to be two and a half billion dollars available next year for raise grants or one and a half billion plus some additional. We're, we're not exactly sure yet until they finish the appropriations bill, but the bottom line is there's significantly more money for raise grants and other programs. And so we want to work with you all and your staff going forward in the new year to, to best position you for competing for those dollars. So with that, Mr. Chairman, Brad, we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you guys. Great job. Thank you for that wonderful update. Uh, Brad, you want to go first? Sure. Um, I have two questions. Uh, question number one, Harry, from what you were describing, um, do you know if the delay caused by more and more continuing resolutions into January or February next year, does that, does that delay all of the infrastructure uh, funding uh, from the Infrastructure Act that was passed, or does it uh, only, only impact some? Or what do you so know I, about that? Harry, I'll jump in on that one. I know you teed it up for me uh, earlier. The, uh, the primary source of the bill or funds that will be delayed are the formula funds, the funds that come out of the highway trust fund. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, you know, you'll continue to get the current levels of uh, your uh, urban formula funds and the other, uh, other formula funds. You just won't get that increase. And as Harry kind of alluded to at the end, we don't know. You know, there are the majority of the funds in the, the, that were appropriated in the infrastructure bill or direct appropriations. So they, they, that funding is now going to be made available, uh, spaced out over five years, like, say, the raise grants. Um, but we don't know if Congress, if the appropriations committees then will add more money or not. And so that's that additional those additional funds will be delayed as well, if there are any. Hey, Brad, can I just, I mean, this spikes one other thing, and I'm sorry, to, I know you had two questions, but just to go on to your question there about the continuing funding resolution, as you recall, um, Congressman Chris did include in the transportation appropriations bill this year, funding for an, a congressionally directed funding for an inline charger project for PSTA to provide inline charges in, uh, in St. Petersburg and Clearwater for your growing electric bus fleet. Um, those, those, that earmarked project won't be finalized until the appropriations bills go final. So that, that again, that's another holdup until the, the, the Congress does an omnibus appropriations bill sometime in January, February. And then I'm gonna pass back to Steve because he can be the bearer of bad news. The other, there was another project that Congressman Christ was supporting for PSTA, which was to provide solar panels at the PSTA uh, headquarters site there to help charge your buses up um, when they come in in the evening. And Steve, you wanna talk about the status of those? Well, Harry, thanks so much for letting me yeah. deliver. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the bad news is that earmark was included in the Invest in America Act, which the House passed earlier this year. Unfortunately, the Senate then started negotiating the, the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which became the vehicle then that the president signed into law. As a result of that, the Invest in America Act was sidelined, including all those earmarks. So they are sitting on the, on the side waiting to see what happens. They are still viable uh, projects that could be included on another bill. I know Chairman Peter DeFazio of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee has said he's committed to trying to find a way to do that. 
but um, you know how legislative bodies are. Once they invest a lot of money in, in one issue, they tend to move on to other issues. So we're going to continue to advocate because uh, personally, we have other uh, clients with other earmarks in that. We'd like to see those done, but stay in touch with the committee staff as we move ahead to do, to do that. Okay, and my Sorry, second, Brad, my, my second question, question, my second question was about something, Steve, you said about the uh, White House involvement and uh, the former mayor of New Orleans. So my thought was, are you suggesting that we tell the architects for the Clearwater Trend Center to put New Orleans Saints stuff on it or <laughs> French Quarter <laughs> to redesign it in a New Orleans type feel and we'll get the money? Is that what you're saying? Uh, whatever it takes, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought, yeah, okay. All right, thank you guys. Any other questions? Uh, David, go ahead. Yeah, hi, Harry. Uh, I just wanted to uh, have you explain maybe a little bit more in detail about the other uh, projects that did receive funding, the raise grant funding, and you said something about they included extra cooling because of the climate change heating up. I mean, what exactly is that? What does that mean? I mean, we're in Florida. We have air conditioning. Is that what they're talking about? Yeah. No, I think the project I was referring to is the project actually in Detroit. Again, again, we're looking at the project summaries for all 90 of the projects. We, we went through and analyzed all the 90 projects that were that were funded in this raise grant, and, and we're kind of looking at uh, we tried to take a look at the themes. What, what were the common themes in the project, in the narratives that the projects were funded? Again, these, these narratives were put out by the, the Department of Transportation in making the award announcement. So that they, the things that they were emphasizing in their summaries of the projects, I think would be a good guide to the, to the, what they're looking for to, in these projects. And, and the project in Detroit I was referring to actually said in the narrative that they were one of they were working to move workers and connect to jobs, cool pavement and quality of life. And so cool pavement is one of the things that this administration has seized on. There's actually a new discretionary program that's created in the bipartisan infrastructure bill to um, reduce what they call heat islands, which are to, to try and use a new asphalt products to, to absorb the heat. So it doesn't radiate heat and keep it so hot, you know, trees to shade those kinds of things. And so, this particular project obviously had some kind of an element to, to keep riders cool while they were waiting for their buses. So these are outdoor transit centers. And, and you know, so what, what Brad and I talked about is anything that you're doing at the new transit center that emphasizes those kinds of things, cooling, keeping passengers comfortable, that kind of thing. The other thing that they, some of the other things, as I mentioned, uh, Councilman, was uh, they, they really highly emphasized multimodal transportation. You know, these transit centers, being able to connect buses and rail and bike and pedestrian walkways and other forms of transportation. That was a highlight of theirs. That they, all of them to a point almost emphasized getting people to work, you know, moving people. And they, and they always talked about disadvantaged riders, you know, people, low income riders, moving people from public housing. Those, those were, seemed to be the themes. And if you look at the, the transit centers that were funded were in places like um, Oakland, Denver, uh, New Orleans, Detroit, Carson City, Nevada, and uh, Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and Dallas. So, you know, all of those, they were focused on on moving people to work. So, Brad, we talked yesterday about uh, trying to come up for the, when you reapply, to come up with some additional data, maybe how this impacts workers in Clearwater and, and the surrounding Clearwater area, getting people over to the beach, sir, to, you know, to their jobs and, and getting people to the growing uh, workforce in downtown Clearwater, that type of thing. So, I mean, there were some common themes. We emphasize those to Brad, and um, and as part of the debrief, every year when there's a competition like this, the DOT is really good about debriefing those who request them for proposals that weren't funded, and that's been really helpful. I think the project, the proposal, was much better this year than last year, based on that debrief from last year, and we'll make sure we get a brief debrief scheduled this year to try and improve it for the next go around. Yeah, I'd like I'd be very interested in be, seeing that debrief because. I really thought this year we had checked every box mm -hmm. that they wanted. Plus, on the phone call to Washington the week before, I mean, I, the one thing that they were talking about was regionality, and I thought we pretty much covered that too. You know, this was a regional project with Connect Tampa to Clearwater, and so 
So I don't know anything. I'd like to see the debrief because I don't know anything that we did not cover on that that was, you know, that they were looking for. Unless they're looking for just, uh, you know, uh, blue uh, cities. I don't know. You know, I know it's very political up there. So there's other well, things, other factors involved. Sure, we talked about that yesterday. We talked about the political side of it. And Steve, in one of his prior jobs, actually was, had to make those decisions about how to make these awards and, and the po politics do play into it. But they, but when you look at the list, there were projects funded in the Republican districts and Democrat districts. And so, you know, it, it, Brad asked the question yesterday, if we could figure out, you know, why some were funded and others weren't. It's a highly competitive program, as we've talked about. I think, Steve, there were, I think for every one that was funded, 10, there were 10 app or nine applicants that weren't. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty, it's a very competitive program. But the good news is with the larger pot of money coming, becoming available over each of the next five years, there should be uh, significantly new opportunities for, you know, to, to compete and win. So I know, Steve, anything you want to comment on that? No, I think you covered it pretty much. Is there any other opportunities other than the raise grants that we could look forward to participating in for the funding of the inter intermodal center, by the way, it's the name of the center in Clearwater. So, um. yeah, you know, I think the, the, the beauty of the raise grant is that the, the maximum size of a raise grant is $25 million. So I think the, the size of those grants, are, this is the program that's best for this particular project, given the cost of the project. There is another project, I don't know, Brad, with bus and bus facilities, I guess that, that you can use for things like this, but I don't think the grants are as are this are big enough to support the transit center project. Is that correct, Brad? Well, they haven't been. Although with the new infrastructure um, act, I think the numbers could could go up to something more meaningful. I mean, maybe that is an option. Yeah, well, certainly one we're, we're going to look at. We don't know that until if if it's passed, you know. Right, and then and again, that's another competitive. Uh, it's the same kind of competition, basically. Um, but to your to your point, I mean, that's what Harry and we talked about yesterday. Is just it does, at least in my mind, seem like uh, a perfectly lottery ping pong ball kind of thing. And then our ping pong ball just didn't come up. Although I know we feel like our ping pong ball is. Um, weighted down or something like it, it's it's not equal to the other ping pong balls and we just want to we'll get the debrief we'll see if we wrote something in a way that we could write something better um maybe there's a political more more political stuff we could do i don't know um i mean to the point that harry was making with the other projects that were funded one of the projects that was funded was in Charlotte, where I used to work, and I, I that was my project. That was they, they got a they're just replacing their old, not nearly as cruddy transit center as Clearwater's, um, um, but they're replacing it. It's old with a new one, right, right on top of it. Like that is no different. It's no different, and I don't know how they got their. I don't know how Charlotte got the money, and we did not. But um, maybe it might. Hopefully, it is just completely random. And we'll get it next time, right? <laughs> we'll just have to see. Try to try to try to um, weight our ping pong ball as much as we possibly can in some way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so we get selected. But at the same time, I think it is appropriate for us to look at alternative ways to fund the project. Yeah. You know, we're committed to keeping the project, the design process going. I think we've got some great momentum, locally at least, to get get a new transit center there. And uh, so there won't be any uh, you know, delay or anything, but I think we're also gonna look at sort of like a plan B funding. Yeah, and, um, and also uh, we've got some alter alternative ideas that I wanna talk to you about. Talking with the new city manager, we've got some great ideas uh, for- Oh, good. Yeah, so. Okay. Anyway, keep us, keep us posted. Yeah. Hey, Councilman and Terry, one other thing, um, one of the projects that was funded, uh, they, they referred in the narrative to increasing the use of active transportation and access to entertainment. So I know that'll, that'll play well with, uh, with the Imagine Clearwater project um, coming closer to completion. That'll be another thing we can emphasize. And there, one other thing, Councilman, you're asking about other criteria they're looking at. I think one or two of the projects emphasize transit-oriented development. In other words, 
applications must have made some kind of a reference to being able to develop commercial proper properties in the surrounding area to the transit center. That was something else apparently they looked at is what, how could this transit center spur development in the surrounding area? And so anything like that, that we could talk to the business community in Clearwater and include that in the next go around might be helpful too. I thought we did that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Well, yeah, I look forward to see the, uh, you know, the boiled down thing of what we really need to do again. So thank you. All right, are there any other questions? Yes. Okay, Gina. Thank you. Um, I know, I, I mean, I too am looking forward to this uh, debriefing with, um, with the Department of Transportation. I'm just very puzzled by, by this. I, it sounds like we truly did everything right. And I, I can't imagine how our application didn't demonstrate that this will help get more people to jobs that they need, that yeah. this addresses climate change. I mean, what bus system doesn't, right? So there's got to be something more to this. Yeah. I, I had it, so have you, you guys said you looked at the, the, the winning applications and like how, you know, what was demonstrated through that. Have you created like a spreadsheet or something that you can show us now or soon that we can look at because we're going, we're going to have to prioritize this and put on the biggest show we can to make sure that we get this money the next time around. I mean, we can't, we can't miss out on this again. We have to win this. So I want to start now. I don't want to wait. I want to see what the what the common threads are with every other how many did you say got something how many won there were 90 projects that were funded yeah so where are the common threads what did everyone say what were the keywords things like that is that something that you guys have done or or would consider doing to help us better understand what what we were missing or what we can do to fashion a winning application next time? Sure, we can do that. We could, we, we kind of have a summary document we went through with Brad yesterday. We'll, we'll type that up, put it in a spreadsheet. I, I guess what I would say about the race brand and Steve's way more experience at these than I am, but you know, when you look at the, the scope of the different projects, I mean, so there are transit centers like the intermodal centers like the Clearwater project. I mean, there were roadway projects, there were bridge projects, there were Harbor projects. There were bike trail, pedestrian trail projects. There were um, rail projects. Uh, there were what they call mobility projects, which is linking pedestrian bike trails and roadways. And there was even one maintenance facility project. So we, we can give you some of the common criteria across all of them. We really, I think in our conversation with Brad yesterday, we're focused on the nine or 10 transit center, intermodal center projects that were funded to see what the common threads there were. But we'll put that on, uh, Commissioner, we'll put that on a spreadsheet and, and try and, and identify the common themes among the winners, if that would be helpful. Steve, I, anything you can, you want to add to that? No, I, I would only add that, uh, Commissioner, I think, you know, we, we attempted to do everything we could do. We had the Congressman call uh, DOT. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it on that on the day it was scheduled, but his staff were very helpful. And Brad did a great job of outlining the projects to the senior staff that worked for the secretary. So I do think, you know, on a political level, we, we push the buttons that we could push. It's going to be, you know, it's, it's just, you know, the debrief will give us a little bit more information. And I think we should optimistically hope, look at the fact that there's going to be considerably more money that's going to be in play over the next year or two. So really over the next five years. I know that doesn't necessarily fit the timeline, but one other thought I had that I wasn't able to join Brad and Harry on the call yesterday, but one other thought I had too is, again, it may not work for the timeline, but you know, before historically when we used to do earmarks it was a an air a successful earmark is a great way to start federal funding for a project because you know fta if they're designated as a congressionally uh, targeted spending project they usually want to make sure that project gets finished and it's a way that they they are then part of the process so it's something that we can consider for next year as well right i can understand the value of um 
getting our their the nose under the tent, if you will, and that exactly a bigger thing. So uh, I'm all about that. I would like to see something not on 90, but the 10 or so um, multimodal centers would be great to look at. I really want to see what they've got that we don't. And I think as a team, we can work together to make this happen. We need this. This isn't just for Clearwater. This has an impact on our entire county and the region. And the longer we wait, the more it hurts the county and the region. You know, and holds us back from progress with our with our transportation um, plans. So, um, we've we've got to hold a microscope up to this one and make sure that we are uh, like number one on the list next time. Thank and, you. And Commissioner Terry, just just going back to the debrief, that, that how important that is. We had the debrief a year ago after the after the previous try and. One of the things that they talked about, Brad, correct, was um, one of the things they wanted to see is control the property where the, the new transit center was going to be uh, located. And Commissioner Albright and the city of Clearwater did a great job at, at helping uh, with that this year. So that certainly strengthened the application. There were some other comments made in the previous debrief about using the, the, the department has this complicated cost benefit analysis. Your staff did a really good job at, um, at, at fixing those uh, items that they talked about. So I think the application was very highly rated the last time around. Staff did a great job, um, and the city and, and Clearwater or PST working together did a great job at fixing some of the, uh, the ideas that were provided in the previous debrief. So we get this next debrief. We'll look at this analysis. Commissioner, share that with you, and I'm sure we can make the application um, stronger and hopefully get over the goal line the next time. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I would just like to mention that I would like to second what Gina said. I think this is a very important project, not only for Clear Aurora, like she said, but Pinellas County. And I just want to say thank you for all your hard work and trying to get this done. Yes. And I agree. Let's continue to focus on this and let's get it uh, accomplished yeah. the next time, next time around. Jamie, do you have any questions? No? All right. Before you guys no, head out, you, Harry and Glenn, I would like to introduce our uh, new legislative board member, Jeff Gow from the city of Dunedin. He is gonna be joining us next month. He'll be on the legislative committee with us, the board here. And I just wanted to introduce him. Jeff, you wanna wave? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else, Brad? There is one other thing I would just like to make right. the committee aware of. Um, PSTA has maybe since for four or five years now had a, uh, Memorandum of understanding that the PSDA board approved between PSDA and HART to and uh, the transit system over in Tampa to uh, collaborate and coordinate um, in any basically in a whole myriad of ways uh, to the to the benefit of both of our agencies and we've used that MOU in the past to share staff to uh, coordinate procurements and things like that to save money. Um, I've had a number of discussions recently with the, with the new CEO over at Hart, and the MOU, which it automatically renews, if not eliminated, she asked, uh, or you know, canceled, and um, renews this month, or re renewed today, because today is December 1st. And, um, she asked me if we could work on a new MOU um, that was more specific. The, the current one kind of just covers every possible thing uh, that we do. And recently at a T, I think it was a T BARDA meeting, a Hills Hillsborough County Commissioner pulled that out and said, oh, um, Good news, heart buses can be maintained by the P over a PSTA, according to this document. Uh, PSTA will, will maintain all the buses for you. And uh, I was like, no, that's not, not no, we're not. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I agreed with her that we, we could come up with a new document. So I just wanted to let you guys know that as of today, we do have this MOU, but we're working on a new one. Mm -hmm. um, it'll basically be the same kind of construct that 
to the extent that one transit system can benefit from something that the other is doing, like a procurement or a staff or something like that, then we work on that. And I think it will, uh, it does have legislative implications, obviously. You know, we are, we recognize like on the raise grant and other things that we're competing a little, you know, we're probably more competing with Tampa than anybody else yeah. uh, in the country. And so we've tried to coordinate like on our uh, ferry, uh, ferry boat grants and things like that with Hillsborough County. And um, so she and I talked about somehow constructing how we might do that in the future um, in, a, in a positive way too in the grant, in that. Harry, I, I have a question. Uh, I heard that, uh, well, the day I think that we, I was told that we didn't get the grant, it, so, I, was I thought I had heard that it went to, did Hillsborough get a grant, a raise grant on something transit? The, the city of Tampa received a raise grant, yes. Do you know what that was for? It, they called it a complete streets project. It was a, it was a combination, Brad, if I recall correctly, it was, um, Linking up bike, pedestrian, yeah, um, street, roadways, yeah. and there's and even creating some BRT lanes. Correct, Brad. I think that was it's sort of a combo okay. uh, project. Okay. All right. Any other questions from the board? All right. Let's move on to item number five. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. We always appreciate you. everything you do for us. We really do. All right. We're going to move on to item five. Does anybody have any other business? Chair, my heart thing was that other business item. Oh, it was. Okay, that's fine. Well, then that was good. That's no problem. Uh, just a quick yep, then go ahead, GA. Sure. Brett, do you know, I just forgot to ask, do you know about when we will have that debriefing? Uh, well, I was talking to uh, Abishak about it. He thought January. So we, we've already, he already put in a request. Okay, good. Will that be you with them or all, well, all of us? I was, I would think it would just be you. With them, and then you would, you guys would refer yeah. back to. Yeah, I mean that's how that's how typically how it is. It's usually a conference call, or it has been in the past. I think just been a yeah. conference call, um, okay, kind of thing. But I mean, if you if you want to listen in too, um, mm -hmm. well, I do, but uh, it might actually. Um, that's fine. Because there could be, if I mean, of course, I would love to, but I think that um, you know, I wouldn't be the only one, and then that, that would be subject to. Sunshine Laws, and I think that it would be most appropriate to have Commissioner Albritton, yeah. if he is interested, to be the one who is in on that. That way you don't have to record and notice, and it can be a private meeting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I, I would, I think that's the most appropriate thing yeah, to do. Yeah, I'd like to do that, yeah. Just um, understand it. To, and yeah, I mean, if you hear it firsthand, and this is this is kind of your this is your jam right here, you know. So it is. I mean, we have um, a lot of things on top of this that this was very important to yeah, us. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's important to us. You have our complete support, but you you really are the champion for this project as far as our board is concerned. And so I think it would be most appropriate for you to be part of that. Um, that um, conversation. So afterwards, we can't wait to hear how it went. Exactly. Yeah. No. I mean, and just a just a little caveat. Um, at least on the every once in a while, the debriefs um, point out some thing. Oh, if you had just done this, if you had just word, written this word, you would have gotten the money. And this is why you didn't. But rarely is that the case. They they right. They usually kind of they give you a lot of really helpful information, um, but the key for us is to develop a a winning strategy, or right. Um, right. you know uh, that that takes whatever we learn at, at that debrief as as one of the inputs, but also the political and the regional support and all that. I mean, it, yeah, like you said, it, it, it's going to take a it's going to take a bunch of um, efforts. Get this done, and, and maybe even looking at an alternative funding st strategy. Uh, yep. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, thank you, Brad. Okay. Thank you, Gina. Any other things, other business? Well, then we're going to move on to item six, and this meeting is adjourned. Jamie, enjoy the snow up in Tallahassee. <laughs>
Yeah, I'll be home today, nice and warm. All right. Thank you, guys. Great Thanks. meeting. Thanks, Dan. Good to see you. You too. Oh, oh, thanks. How exciting, huh? Yeah, it is. I'm very happy. Oh, he's from. It's actually going really yeah. well. Good. Yeah, I had a fundraiser. Different than Bill was. He, Forty people there, there with a lot of big really well. cities. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, a lot of voters. All voters. Boston had a great. Uh, uh, my best to get idea.